a concussion. I'm attorney Joseph Lamb with Joe Knows Brains. I handle hundreds of TBI cases throughout my career. And um, I'm here to talk a little bit about some of the signs and symptoms of concussion, how to figure out if you've suffered from a concussion, and a little bit of an explanation about the mechanism that, that causes concussions, which are known as a, a mild traumatic brain injury. Um, first, addressing kind of the signs and symptoms is something that I've talked about in prior live streams. And, and really, the signs and symptoms of a concussion are about as myriad as, as one can imagine any kind of brain injury would be. They range from the emotional uh, symptoms, which can be anything from increased uh, agitation, lack of patience, um, a change in mood. In fact, a rapidly changing mood can be one of the main signs. And now this means that someone who may generally be more even keeled may more quickly jump the gun, but it can also be the opposite, such as a more sad, more reserved, someone who might be uh, loud and active may become a, um, a little bit less so. When it comes to the non-cognitive symptoms, these are the more external symptoms that, that lovers may, um, or excuse me, that friends and loved ones may be able to, to identify. And these symptoms tend to be difficulty walking, difficulty concentrating, word finding difficulties. These are really the symptoms that you can see externally that someone nearby might say, hey, you know, you're not walking the same as you used to. These are the symptoms that really show up um, in, in more serious cases, but they show up all across the board. When it comes to some of the, um, the symptoms aside from these, uh, a lot of times people report nausea um, and, and a lot of other things. Kind of, I, I realize now that I've gotten the reverse order, so I want to start with um, what a concussion actually is, because many people get confused as to what a concussion or a brain injury even is. I mean, at a base level, a brain injury is any time that damage is done to the nice little watery sponge we have between our skull. Um, there's multiple different types of brain injuries. A concussion is, of course, just one type. Um, the, the, the other types, just to be really quick, is generally you have blunt force impacts. You have um, impact injuries where something actually becomes lodged in the brain. You could have locks of oxygen in the brain. Concussion isn't one of these. It's usually known as it's usually something that occurs when the brain is rapidly moving inside the skull. So to use a, a very simple analogy, the brain is kind of like a pickle inside of a jar. And when you shake the jar, the pickle bangs against the sides of the jar. And when that happens, it's gonna cause damage to the brain. And this damage can present in a number of different ways. Uh, first, there's inflammation. So when the brain, you know, once you shake around that pickle jar, the brain's gonna be irritated, blood's gonna come to the brain, in the same way that a bruise occurs in any other part of the body. What makes concussions so dangerous is, is unlike a bruise to the arm, damage to your brain cells can be permanent because brain cells don't regrow over time. So when the brain is stretched, when it's shook around like that pickle inside the jar, it's, it, it causes damage that can often be irreparable. And looking at this, so, so that's kind of what a concussion is and that it's caused by the brain rattling around in the skull. Now, this can be a result of multiple things. What we see most often in our practices is when you've got a rapid acceleration of the brain, such as in a car accident or falling off a bike, things along those lines, and then immediately the skull stops, such as making contact with something, and the brain slams violently into the, into the side of the skull. Um, all that's a very serious way to discuss what causes a concussion, but... When that happens, the brain cells, which each think of each brain cell is kind of like a little tadpole. It's got the one main center, and then it's got a long tail. The tail is called the axon. The axons all connect with each other, one after another after another. And when those connect, those form the gray matter of your brain. And when your brain is shook violently, it stretches those tails. And it's actually that stretching of the tail. It's called, the fancy term is axonal shearing that leads to an actual brain injury. And, and as we've discussed, a mild traumatic brain injury is considered a concussion. Now, kind of turning into the second distinction of what does a mild traumatic brain injury mean or why does concussion seem mild, but for so many people it can be so serious. The term mild only refers to meaning that you lost consciousness for less than five full minutes. So, so in reality, mild isn't a appropriate term for these things because for many, many people, these injuries are so much more than just a mild 
injury because there's something that can seriously disrupt people's lives and livelihoods. Um, the, the, the turning to the next part, once the concussion occurs, it's actually a longer series of events than what most people think of when they think of an injury. If you have a typical bruise on your arm, as we discussed, as I was discussing kind of in a comparison to a concussion, that bruise is, is a one-time event. If I hit my arm, I'm bruised, and then the blood cells come in to, to try and heal that process, but there's no real more damage done. It's all healing. Unfortunately, with concussions, what science has been showing lately is, is there's what's known as the, there's no way to avoid the long science word here, so the neurometabolic cascade that occurs after concussion. To put that in more simple terms, what it means is, is that once the axons, the brain cells, their little tails, once those are stretched, it causes them to release signals into the brain, which says, hey, I'm injured. And sometimes that can lead to death of the cells. Um, and when that cell death occurs, that's when we see what's known as a post-concussion syndrome, which is really just something that... Um, affects about one in every 10 people who suffers from a concussion, which sounds like a small number, but when you think about the sheer magnitude of concussions, it's quite a large number of people that, that are suffering from this. And, and when the, um, someone's suffering from post-concussive syndrome, the symptoms of the concussion that I was discussing at the beginning, those can go on for, for months or even years or, and can even be considered permanent. So, um, the main takeaway from all of this is that a concussion is something that's caused when the brain shook like a pickle in a jar, which is just a fun way to say that there's a very serious injury that can occur, and it's something that you're going to want to have checked out. Um, following this video today, Katie's going to post below a link that you can um, check out our, docu our document, the signs and symptoms of a concussion, just in case you or a loved one's ever suffering from an accident or something like that and wants to make sure you're doing the right thing. The sheet just looks like this. The number of people who call us and have no idea that they've really suffered anything, um, it, it, it's just astronomical. And I'm really, we really want to be able to, uh, to make sure you get the best treatment you need and see the doctors that you need to see so that way you can get checked out and start treating early because the best way to make sure that a concussion doesn't become a permanent injury is getting the right treatment early on. Thank you, everybody. I'm Joe Lamb. I'm a, I'm a uh, brain injury and bicycle accident lawyer here in Clearwater, Florida. Um, and Jenna's brains. Thank you.